Hi, this is the Context AR project for the computer science capstone of spring summer 2020. This team includes myself, David Poole, Chris Partridge, Cheng Li, Trung Nguyen, Jeffrey Olson, and Donathan Ellison. Context AR is a geo based AR sandbox style application that can run on multiple platforms. Our app is based around immersive learning, and we have built out the feature set to meet the needs of foreign students who would like a better way to learn English. The problem brought forth by our project sponsor was to create a way for instructors to better help navigate students around without knowing English. The purpose of this application is to give instructors the ability to develop lessons or modules as we refer to them, which act as missions that students can engage with to learn English through context. In the next section of this presentation, we will show how the application works using modules in a demonstration. Hello, my name is Christopher Partridge, and I am going to be demoing our product Context AR. Let's get started. In this example, we'll have an instructor create a module to help a student go buy coffee. This is our home screen. It shows all public modules that are viable within your area. To create a module, I'll click on the hamburger menu and I'll select Manage Modules. Here we can see all the modules that I've created. Now we'll click on Add Module. It'll take me to the Module Info screen, which allows me to add the module title, description, and pins. To add pins, I click on the Pin Map button. For this demo, I'll add three pins to make it quick. Users could also take a picture and upload it to the pin info. This will be seen by the student. We have no way to indicate the end of the module yet, so it'll be up to the instructor to make sure the student knows. So we'll put a special message in here for a third pin. We're going to hit save to finish adding pins. Now we have created a module and we can click on share to give a specific student access. Just type a student's email here and click add. You could also copy the link with the copy button and share it with the students as long as the module is public. Click save. Let's give this a title and description and then we'll be done. There we go, let's finish up and hit save. Save it again. The module that we created could show up here in this menu, but since it is not public and has been shared with an individual student, we can find it by clicking this hamburger menu and go to my modules. Let's take a look for it. To make sure it's the correct module, we can click View Details to check the owner of the module in the description. Let's start the module. The user location is marked with a blue marker. If the user cannot be found, they can click this button to send the map back to its current location, but we're already there, so we won't need to do that. The first pin in the module will be marked with yellow. To find it, click this button. When the user, user has finished that pin, they can click the two arrows buttons to go to the next pin or the previous pin. Each pin will have the information provided by the instructor, such as tasks to complete or info on the area. To get directions how to get to a pin, click on the Google Map button, which will open up Google Maps to direct you to the location. Now we've reached the final pin. We can determine this since the next arrow does not take us anywhere further and the instructor's message states that we are done. Now we can enjoy our hard earned coffee. Let's go over the top five features. First feature will be our module creation. This allows users to create new modules. These modules will then feature pins on our map uh, of landmarks and destinations for people to visit. Uh, our next feature is the ability to add pins to the module. 
Um, this allows users to add a title, a uh, description of the landmark, uh, some hints about the place. And another feature of the add pin is it allows users to upload pictures attached to the pin. And then also our other feature is the viewing modules. Users can scroll through the modules that they are allowed to view, and they can either get more details about the module or start the module. And this first view is the list of the modules, and the view to the right of that is a, a preview of one of the modules. Uh, other feature is our viewing pins. Uh, people, users can start a module and start at a pin and learn about the destination and get a picture of picture related to the pin and they can visit the pin and then progress and move on to the next pin. Google Maps. Um, our pins also contain an external link to Google Maps if the user needs directions to get to the destination. Sharing modules. Creators of modules are also able to share modules via user's email address and even share a link to the module if they please. Let's go over some small feature that our app has. Google authentication. We chose Google authentication because we think it would be more convenient for our user to just sign in with their Google account instead of having to make a new account. For module management, user can also delete or edit their module. Module discovery map. After the user login, all the module that are close to the user will be displayed on the home page. iOS and Android web view native app we also have a web-based container so that our app can be published to the store. For our future goal, potential camera-based feature. As shown in our demo, we can share the module by using email or URL, but we can also make it faster by using QR code. Another feature that we are thinking of is real-time translation because the purpose of this app is to help our sponsor teach language. A chat room for both teacher and our student. So students can request teacher assistant for more information in case they are lost. Recommended system for module. Currently, we only show public module that are close to the user. In the future, we want to implement a system that can show module that the user friends have or, simil or similar module to the one that the user just finished. Template for module creation. Our feedback from our sponsor, it is slow and time consuming to keep entering the same information for different pin. We are thinking of implementing a template for different category of pin to make the creation process faster. Um, if you have any feedback or recommendation, please let us know. This portion of the presentation will be focused on the technical aspects of the project, reviewing the architecture, achievements, and milestones. The database is composed of two collections. The modules collection is for storing information about each module, including the owner's ID, name, and email, as well as the module's title and description. Additionally, each module has an array of pin IDs for the pins associated with that module, an array of emails for users that have access to the module, and finally a public-private setting. The pins collection stores information about individual pins, including their name, description, a hint, and a photo. Each pin also has coordinates used to place it on the map. This is the wireframe used for the app implementation. Red arrows indicate moving forward in the diagram to a new screen or bringing up a pop-up. 
Green arrows indicate moving backwards in the diagram to a prior screen or closing a pop-up. Boxes side by side indicate that they are on the same web page, but either are in separate tabs or represent an update in the page. The application starts by prompting the user to sign in via Gmail, and once signed in, their profile information is stored in Stitch for future use. Once signed in, a user will be on the default map view, which will figure out the user's location and mark it on the map. We can now find the modules the user has access to by querying the modules collection for documents where the user's ID and the, is the owner ID or the user's email is in the module shared with array. Then the first pin of each module is found by querying pins. Once found, the pin's coordinates and picture are used to make the module's marker. The Manage Module screen needs nothing passed into it as it can query the modules with the user ID found in Stitch. The Edit Module and Drop Pin screens require the module ID to be passed in through the URL. That way the module and its pins can be retrieved. In both these screens, the pins need to be retrieved with an order assigned to them beforehand. Otherwise, the pins could come back in an incorrect order. The Edit Pin modal requires a pin to be passed in it for editing, which can be done from both the Edit Module screen and the Drop Pin screen. The Share menu pop-up needs nothing passed it to it since it is part of the Edit Module component class, and thus has access to the module already. The List Module screen does not require any parameters passed to it, since the user information stored in Stitch can be used to find accessible modules, similar to the default map view. The View Pin Map requires the module ID to be passed in through the URL. That way the module and its pins can be retrieved. Clicking on a pin in the View Pin Map will bring up the View Pin Info pop-up, which contains the pin information as well as a link to Google Maps. The Google Maps link will take the user to the Google Maps app with the destination set to the coordinates of the pin. All right, now let's move on to the tech stack of Contest AR. Uh, for web page hosting, we have GitHub Pages. For frameworks and libraries, we have React.js, Bootstrap.js, Leaflet.js, and Google Cloud Platform. For data management, we have MongoDB Atlas and MongoDB Stitch. For styling, we have Bootstrap and Styled Components. And for image storage, we have AWS. So here's a diagram showing how our app is communicating between all these services. So at the front end, we have GitHub page hosting, and that is our app, Contest AR. And then in the middle, we have MongoDB Stitch acting as a middleman to handle all the requests coming from the front end and then sending the request to the back end database to retrieve information from it. Uh, Google Cloud Platform and AWS 3 both are third party services in MongoDB Stitch. So whenever the user is sending the request to log in, uh, Stitch will handle it for us. So we don't have to worry about the uh, uh, API keys. So here's some detail uh, for GitHub page hosting. So when we finish our build and then do npm run build, npm run the point, it will push the static files to gh pages branch in our repo. And then uh, GitHub pages would then use this build to publish the uh, website. So it, once it's pushed, uh, the capstone AR team .github.io would get updated as well. So next we have MongoDB and MongoDB Stitch. So MongoDB is a NoSQL database, which means that the data is stored in documents instead of tables. The benefit of using NoSQL database is that we can add as many fields as we need it without modifying the schema or the uh, relational database. And it also reduces the need to join tables. Uh, so, and then MongoDB Stitch 
provides rich features to meet our needs uh, to create contest AR. We have two collections. One is the modules and the other one is pins. Uh, so one of our favorite features is the rows in MongoDB Stitch because it can handle the user permission by applying rule conditions uh, which make the module sharing possible. So here we can see if you are the owner of the module, you will have read and write permission to this module. And then if the module is set to public, then everyone would have read access to it. If the module is set to shared, so uh, the people will have read access only when they are in the share with uh, array. So if you, let's say, if you share module to David uh, in the share with array, it has to have uh, David's email address in order to, for him to have read access to this module. Next, we have AWS Image Storage Service. Uh, so AWS is the third-party uh, service in MongoDB Stitch. So when we connect the API key in MongoDB Stitch, it will handle the requests for us. Um, so when the user clicks at choose files and then choose a, an image file, it will store the image as base64 image data locally. And then once they hit submit, it would then upload to the S3 bucket that we set up. Uh, the way that we retrieve the image is that uh, since we have the we have image for each pin, so the pin would contain a pin ID which is unique. So we make the image name as uh, same as the pin ID. So we can just retrieve the image by accessing the URL plus the pin ID dot JPEG or dot PNG. Hi, this is David Poole, and I'm going to be talking about the development process. Our major steps and milestones were broken into five parts. Phase one was from April 28th to May 18th. This phase consisted of brainstorming, developing workflow, building requirements documents, user stories and wireframes, as well as delivering an initial prototype to the sponsor for feedback. Phase two was from May 18th to June 22nd. This phase consisted of development of MVP following along our wireframe we had built from sponsor feedback. Phase three was from June 22nd to July 6th, and it had revolved around finalizing our MVP and delivering the MVP to our sponsor. Phase four was from July 6th to July 20th. This phase, we tested the MVP and fixed bugs, and then began a reach discussion about goals we can set and paths to take to get there. Phase five is from July 20th to August 18th. In this phase, we received extensive feedback on the MVP from our sponsor and began charting out a path towards catering his needs better with reach feature sets. During this phase, we also fixed bugs in our design and cleaned up our UI. I should also mention a bonus phase and final sprint where we will be ironing out our reach features and delivering the product to our sponsor. Our workflow for this project revolved around the integration of some vital development tools. We had followed a modified Agile method while removing a lot of the various aspects of Agile that deal with conducting daily business. While utilizing the core principle of Agile, such as delivering value early by creating many working prototypes, refining our design and meeting weekly to plan what would be accomplished in the week to come. We also used a scrum methodology for our meetings while having a virtual stand-up style discussion at the beginning of every meeting. To facilitate our workflow, we used JIRA for our Kanban board and to manage our backlog. This was perfect as it integrated seamlessly with GitHub allowing us to tie branches to tasks in JIRA. We also used Mira to do virtual whiteboarding and to do things from wireframe development to user story discussions. Looking back on our development process, I find a couple things to note. Our team worked best with larger projects per person. 
being able to have a single larger deliverable that someone is responsible for returned much better results than throwing multiple people at small parts of a large problem. Our team was very collaborative, frequently having lengthy discussions on Discord whenever an issue arose. We started development by defining user stories and goals for our project. Our development was a process of building prototypes, receiving feedback, and implementing solutions to our feedback. In our second half of development, we found that it was not the most effective schedule to meet two days a week with only one day in between. So we moved towards a more spread out series of meetings with two stand-up chats on Monday and Friday with a longer planning meeting every Wednesday. Now I'll talk a little bit about the responsibilities and contributions for this team. So on our team, work was distributed on an as-need basis. We did not split up our team into roles such as back-end or front-end. Every week, we met to review our current sprint objectives and progress. Team members without active tasks were encouraged to pick up a backlog task that was active in our to-do list. Our backlog and Kanban board was managed by Donovan Ellison and myself. When it comes to individual responsibility and roles, Chris Partridge was responsible for the development of the edit module view and the share module view, including the link sharing feature and the default map view, including the underlying backend implementation for all these features. Chris was also involved in development of our wireframe. Chen Li was responsible for the development of the Google OAuth login screen, the select module view, the module info screen, and the module ID go to feature, as well as giving us stitch backend implementation set up and consulting, the AWS cloud media storage implementation, the initial setup of the hamburger menu and its routing, and the hash routing management and GitHub pages hosting management. Trung Nguyen was responsible for the Google Maps exporting feature for the routing, the view pin map module usage screen and the UI for interacting with the modules, and also for the rework of the reach goal feature set. Jeffrey Olson was responsible for the development of the pin drop modal and its extensive feature set and the pin drop map and backend implementation, as well as building out the extension of our reach goal feature set, including the Facebook share feature. Donovan Ellison was responsible for the manage module screen, the manage pin screen, the backend implementation on stitch for pin dropping and their connections and the development of the wireframe. For myself, David Poole, I was responsible for user story and project vision development, workflow development and sprint planning, team management and communication, product testing and feature review, stakeholder communication and quality assurance, as well as developing an iOS and Android container for our app. I would like to give special acknowledgement to Donovan Ellison for working hard to facilitate the role of Scrum Master and working with me through big picture concepts and planning. And also to Cheng Li for being a vital developer, offering extensive knowledge on our tech stack and for being there to aid in debugging and implementation details. Now I'll talk a little bit about the lessons learned in unexpected events. For one thing, COVID-19 was an unexpected thing. We had to deal with working online entirely with collaboratively remotely was something we had to plan for constantly. But once we were used to it, I think things worked very well. A large lesson, it's about the value of having a unified vision of a product. For us, using a wireframe with many visual cues, including a system of highlighting different screens for in progress, finished, or not yet done. This tool was invaluable, and I'm glad we started it so soon. And I think the largest lesson I personally learned as the team lead is that gauging how long it will take a developer to complete a task is very hard to do, especially when you do not have the luxury of seeing them every single day. The complexity this adds when assigning tasks can be problematic and make things feel uneven to developers. I think the rem remedy for this is very frequent communication and checking in with your developers. Wrapping up. Thank you to our instructor, Bruce, our sponsor, Saul, and the Portland State University Computer Science Department for granting us this opportunity 
and making us better software engineers. Here is the feedback from our sponsor. Hi there. Uh, my name is Solomon Collins, and I am the person who originally presented this capstone team with the idea behind the app they eventually built. Uh, I assume at this point you're familiar with the design and workings of Context AR, but I thought it would be helpful for you to know a little bit about the project from my perspective as well. So I came to the team with an abstract idea of what I wanted to build, but I have absolutely no knowledge in the field of computer science. To make the situation potentially even more problematic, there really isn't something very similar to the app I proposed building. So essentially, I was asking them in very lay terms to make something for which there doesn't seem to have a comparison. Despite these potential communication pitfalls, though, the team was actually able to bring this app to completion. I think the team shows three big skills are at play that allowed them to do such a great job. One, the team's success expresses terrific communication, both external and internal to the team. Uh, shows organization, both in terms of work product and team dynamics. It shows a lot of creativity after all. Like I said, Context AR doesn't really have comparables. So the most apparent quality leading to their success has to be communication skills. Like I said, for them to have been able to bring my idea to completion in spite of my lack of technical knowledge displays their ability to sort of toggle between the world of computer science and the one the rest of us occupy where technologies just seamlessly work the way we want them to. Even though my contact with the team was very limited throughout the building of Context AR, they clearly listened really well and asked all the right clarifying questions. Second, the team's organization is clearly an important skill. I'm sure the team members are all organized in the way they work individually. After all, this much is clear from looking over their wireboarding diagrams and the structure of their report. But when I say organization, I'm also talking about their team dynamics in a sense. In order for them to have completed the project, they all had to have worked individually and in different roles. I feel their success is evidence of healthy team dynamics. Finally, and I think most importantly, it's clear the team members are comfortable applying their solid computer science skills in very novel situations. Uh, so like rather than shying away from uncharted waters the way many people do, the team took on uh, the, the challenge of actualizing a very abstract idea. Uh, this quality shows a level of comfort with creativity and innovation that seems above average to me. So, from my perspective, it's been a real pleasure working with this Capstone team. After all, I'm, overall, I'm, I'm, I'm really impressed with lots of, uh, um, with them in a, in a lot of different ways. So, uh, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to reach out to me. Finally, the app can be found at capstoneartm.github.io AR app.